Okay, carburetor theory class is in session. My name's Juan, and this is the uh, Makuni Constant Velocity Carburetor out of the 2004 Cerro XT225. We're going to cover the theory and operation of this carburetor using some neat graphics we found on the, on the internet and go over all the components of this partially stripped down carburetor and explain what their purpose is and help you tune your carburetor. So this is looking at the carburetor from the left side of the bike. Uh, to, on the right side of the carburetor is the air inlet, the air box, and on the left side, the carburetor goes into the engine. On top of the carburetor is the diaphragm, which runs the slide and needle, and on the bottom of the carburetor would be the float bowl, which is removed. I want to take this opportunity to thank my wife, Jenny, for allowing me to bring this stinky old carburetor in today to work on it on this rainy day. How's that going up there? You got that duct figured out yet? That filter? Baby wipes are good for all kinds of solutions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With the float bowl off and the carburetor upside down, we can see the basic inner workings. Here's the floats that literally uh, are like a set of toilet bowl floats that control the amount of fuel that lives in inside the float bowl. The float cutoff switch is located right underneath here. Here's the main jet. I can see the number is 125. The main jet is threaded into the needle jet and the needle of course slides up and down inside that needle jet. When the throttle is wide open the needle jets out of the way and fuel is being ported solely through this main jet. Forward of the main jet is the pilot jet which controls the amount of fuel that is used to idle the bike. Just forward of the pilot jet located on the outside of the carburetor underneath is the pilot screw that controls the idle mixture adjustment. And here's your overall idle adjustment, the big thumb screw located on the outside of the carburetor which adjusts the idle on the butterfly valve or just the butterfly valve to adjust the idle on the bike. Inside here is the butterfly valve, opens up with the throttle cables. You can just see the tip of the uh, pilot screw. I've threaded it all the way in and counted the number of turns that the pilot screw is set at on this stock setting. I'm going to go ahead and overhaul this carburetor and replace all those components, but you want to note the settings of your carburetor before you tear it all apart. Write that down for future reference. On the right side of the carburetor is the air cutoff valve, diaphragm, and valve. Valve goes in that hole here, and the diaphragm lives here. And looking straight down the top, this is where the diaphragm lives, and the diaphragm, of course, is attached to the slide and the needle. Now let's look at some graphics and see how this carburetor actually works from the inside. But first, let's review the basic concept of throttle position and what that means to you to tune your carburetor. Here's another important concept to understand when tuning your carburetor. The only thing that matters when you're tuning your carburetor is throttle position. It doesn't matter how fast the RPM of the engine's turning. It doesn't matter how fast the air is flowing through the carburetor. It doesn't matter how fast the bike's going. Everything is adjusted based on throttle position. Now you don't have to do this. This is just for illustrative purposes only, but idle to full throttle Quarter throttle, half throttle, three quarter throttle, wide open. Those are the different steps that the carburetor's got to go through that the different jets and circuits work with while tuning your carburetor. And let's go inside and we'll understand more about that once we see it illustrated. Here's the chart that explains the relationship between throttle position and the inner workings of the carburetor. On the lower left, corner of the chart is uh, closed throttle position, far right side of the chart is wide open throttle and all throttle positions in between. At the bottom of the chart we see the uh, operation of the pilot air screw and the jet. S starting at uh, closed idle we're running fuel through the idle circuit throughout the entire throttle range of the carburetor. Next up is the throttle valve cutaway, which we don't really have on this carburetor. That has to do with the shape of the slide. In some carburetors, you have an adjustable slide shape that will in 
control the enrichment of the fuel at those lower throttle settings. Above that is the needle jet adjustment, which controls your mid-range fuel flow. And finally, the main jet, which controls your fuel flow from about half throttle to wide open. Now let's check out this animation and see how it all works with the orientation of the airbox being on the right and the engine to our left. And here's the location of all the individual components. Starting with a cold bike, we turn the fuel pet cock on and fuel enters the float bowl via the floats and the float shutoff valve. Then we open the choke circuit, pulling the choke, allowing extra fuel to be used for the start. And the Yamaha is particularly cold blooded. So as we start the bike, fuel is pulled in from both the choke circuit and the idle circuit giving us enough fuel to get the bike started and warmed up. With the bike warmed up, we can close the choke and run off the idle circuit. Now we're gonna roll on the throttle and see the diaphragm in action. Butterfly valve opens, that opens the vacuum passage, sucking the diaphragm up, which in turn raises the slide and the needle and allows fuel to begin to pass through the main jet and the needle jet. And thus the name constant velocity carburetor as the air is kept at a fairly constant velocity through the venturi tube of the carburetor. And the one thing I don't agree with on this illustration is that fuel should be indicated still running through the idle circuit even as you open up the throttle. And here we go now wide open throttle after a slight lag the diaphragm raises the needle all the way up and all you're running on is the main jet plus the fuel that's in the idle circuit. When it comes time to determine what uh, jets you want to use in your carburetor, if you want to change your jets at all, a good logical sequence of events would be to start with the idle circuit first, get your idle worked out, and then go right to wide open throttle, get your main jet determined, and then start working on the intermediate throttle settings with your needle, jet, and needle. Now a word of caution about jets. Jets sizes are just arbitrary sizes based upon manufacture. So if you're working with a Makuni carburetor, make sure you check with Makuni jets and jet sizes. Don't mix them up with Kiyine or some other kind of carburetor. The basic premise on jets is if you think you need a richer mixture, you get a bigger jet, which has a larger hole, which allows more fuel through that circuit. If you think you need a leaner mixture, go with a smaller jet. For the needle screw, start at about two, two and a half turns out from all the way in and make your adjustments from there. Once you get the bike running at a good idle, see which screw position allows the highest RPM idle in a set position. I would leave the float level adjustment alone unless you think it's grossly off, but that level can be adjusted by bending this little tang right here. So that's it for basic carburetor theory class. Uh, stay tuned for the complete teardown of this carburetor and rebuilding of it for more details on how to actually do that and how to tune your carburetor. Thanks for watching. Let me know uh, some of your constructive criticisms and uh, helpful hints and tips that you've had out there in the field.